Brian, start us off. Can you talk about the key to bouncing back from a game like Utah? Well, um, we just we didn't shoot very well that weekend, and we've gone a long time without doing that, which was really positive because we've had a really good shooting year. We're about, I think, one of the only four or five teams about 50 percent. So. You know, they've done a great job with that. And I thought we just got a little bit complacent. We got on the road and our offense, you know, it's, it's ironic, but we've talked about it being under Coach Wooden's watch. It's, you know, you can't be in a hurry. Uh, we want to play it quick. We want to play up tempo, but I thought offensively we got in a hurry. And because of that, we took more difficult shots than what we have been. So this week's focus, you know, and emphasis has got to be about we want to run, we want to play up tempo, but we got to run an offense where we get high quality shots. Because it wasn't turnovers. We still had another low turnover trip. I think we averaged like 12, 12 and a half turnovers for the trip. So we just got to work harder about making defenses guard us and get better shots. What do you think that says about how tough it is to win on the road in the conference? Well, like this? and that's part of it. You know, that, that's part of it. We got a lot of guys. You know, our freshmen were on their first Pac 12 road trip. First time Tony's really been involved in playing time with a road trip. And so, you know, it's part of gaining experience. And that's the scary thing about Stanford. You got all upperclassmen. You got three juniors and two seniors in the starting lineup. They've been in Pauley. They understand about the LA trip and they're playing well. They've won three in a row. And then you got Cal on the weekend who hadn't lost. So, whether, whether you're at home or on the road in this league this year, you got to play well. And we did not play well enough against Utah uh, to win. We were able to play well enough against Colorado. But you got to play well. If you don't play well, uh, you're probably going to get beat in this league. It's, it's really good top to bottom. Uh, statistically across the country you guys are you know you're up there in almost every stat what do you think is missing like what do you think is the the one part of your team that maybe is uh maybe is a little behind uh maybe you know the rest of a, what well i think we with? just gotta keep getting better you know I, I was pleased with that road trip that we had growth in the area that we proved we could win a game at colorado without shooting the ball well and we nearly won the utah game as well as utah played and we gave ourselves a chance in that last two minutes to actually um have a chance to win that game and we shot like 32 percent so you know I, that i hope is what the guys took out of it is that we don't have to shoot 50 percent you know we, that's great when we do but if we have an off shooting night, now we've proven that we can win a game. And I hope they take some momentum from that. And now we just got to, we're like a lot of teams this time of year. It's, you got to keep growing. You got to keep getting better. And I don't think there's any one thing. I think, you know, a month ago we were asking that question. Our board plays improved. Our defense has improved. We just got to make sure we'll continue to make strides in the right direction. What do you think the team became in place and looking back there's something we could have done differently to prepare? Well, I, no, I don't think it had to do with prepare. I mean, obviously it's a quick turnaround, but it wasn't how the guys prepared. I think we just got in a hurry offensively. I think we just we took some ill-advised, quick, contested shots, uh, dribbled when we should have shot, uh, shot when we should have dribbled, you know, pass the ball, make the extra pass. You know, our assist turnovers were usually were about 18-10. And, you know, especially the Utah game, the, the turnovers and assists were almost identical. And that's usually not the way our team is. So, um, but it was a good environment, and Utah plays awfully well at home. You know, their only loss has been an overtime game where it was a kind of a, a freak steal at the end against Oregon that allowed them to lose that game. So uh, we knew it was going to be a tough turnaround, a quick turnaround for us. And, uh, but I don't think it was any one thing that the guys did. They did a really good job in the amount of time they had to prepare. Is part of the shooting struggles maybe a – a slump at well, the no, well. I, no, I don't agree with that. They're, they're not struggles. Um, when you just have, you know, two games that are on the road, that's not a shooting slump. Um, there are a lot of teams that would like to be shooting the ball the way we shoot the ball. Uh, so I don't think there's any kind of slump, and our guys aren't. You know, I just think it's a combination of road trip and good. Good. Both of those teams are really good defending teams, um, and and like I said, we got in a hurry. I think we just got to calm down take our transition when it's there and when it's not there just make one two extra passes to get a better shot you know i think that's more of the issue than really a struggle I, you know, a struggle is you know if you're shooting 40 percent on the year uh that's a struggle we're not we're not to that point we're, we're doing a pretty good job of shooting the ball this year can you talk about Anderson's growth this season and uh, you know his maturity? That's you know you saw that in the Utah. Well, game. that's the biggest thing is his maturity. You know he he just it's one thing to start the season and you're around a triple double. It's another one and now that you're nearly 20 games into the season and you're one of three or four players that are over 15 points, over seven rebounds, over five assists. There's just not a lot of players in the country doing that. And you know especially when there's 
so many challenges towards him of whether he can play the point position, and he's been he's been tremendous. He's not only been a very good point guard for us, he's been one of the best point guards in the country. So his maturity has been terrific. So you got seven players in this team who have scored 20 points in a game before. So, I mean, you have a deep bench. What, what will that mean for games, you know, in the future like Utah where it gets down to the end and you have a full bench that is capable of uh, winning games? Well, I think that's what we've talked to the team about, you know, that uh, – you don't dwell on a loss. Um, we haven't dwelled on the Utah loss. We've tried to learn from that loss. Just like when we beat, you know, Colorado, it's you know we don't stand still. We don't. Uh, we try to build upon that. And that's as we coming off a loss here. That's what the team's done. We got a lot of weapons, and we're improving defensively. Now we're running into two really good, experienced teams this week. That's going to be a lot of fun and great challenges. But we just got to keep building and keep growing. And hopefully, this team's going to do that. They they've listened all year and they've worked. We had a really good practice yesterday. So um, they've bounced back well. There's, they, they've always been a resilient group, whether it's been win or loss, of trying to get better. Jordan necessarily hasn't shot his usual percentage right. lately, but it seems like he's been doing kind of the other little Lord things. Mike, so what does that say about him? Well, a, a maturity is, again, going from your freshman to sophomore year, he's fine. We always talk about find a way. And, and, and we've got to help Jordan. Um, you know, I think Jordan's been in a hurry. And Jordan is a prolific scorer, great shooter. We got to get we got to work the offense harder to get him better shots, uh, because as I said on the onset of the season, he's as good with moving out the basketball as I've coached, and we got to get that going again. I, I, he's just been in a little bit of a hurry, but um, you know he still makes people guard and puts teams in a difficult situation with matchups. So. You know, where they've controlled him a little bit, it's opened up things like at Colorado for Norman Powell to get 18 points. It's freed up guys like Zach on the perimeter at, uh, because Jordan's always getting the best defender. So that's different. You know, last year, Shabazz probably got the, the best defender in the backcourt. So it's all a learning process. But, you know, Jordan gets rebounds. He assists well. He's guarding better. He's doing a lot of other things that's helping us win games. Seems like with the rebounding especially, that kind of – that spike kind of came out of nowhere. And he, well, and it really helps us because, you know, a month ago we were talking about that being an issue, and I always say it's an issue because it's the stop to your defense. But we are a much better rebounding team now than what we were a month ago, and Jordan's had a lot to do with that. Anytime you can get guys in the backcourt rebounding, uh, that really helps you. What have you noticed about how opposing teams are guarding your freshmen and how they've adjusted to any, any increased attention? Yeah, you know, it's and we've talked a little bit to both Zach and Bryce about it. That um, you know, it might not have been known a month ago. You know, now we're 18 games into this thing, and there's plenty of tape out. There's a, now you're on the board as as a scout because both of them have had big scoring nights. Both of them have had a lot to do with our. If you look at our. Our success, a lot of it has to do when all of a sudden we go to the bench, our momentum changes, there's a lot of things that they've done very, very well. So they're not your typical bench guys that, okay, they're role guys and this is how you're getting scouted. It's a little bit more intense. So that's a learning curve for both of them. And so it's a, there's a lot of teaching moments that uh, we're trying to provide to both of those guys. Are they exceeding your expectations from what you would have uh Tagged him as we get coming in the season. The freshmen, yeah, yeah. Well, through 18 games, they've done, you know, they've done a really good job. You know, it's Zach can score for us. He knows how to create his own shot. He gets out in transition. He's very athletic. Uh, he's done a really nice job defensively. Uh, Bryce is somebody who's really controlled our offense and ran our offense. You know, he's been top five in the Pac-12 in overall games and assist turnover ratio. And you know, so they've done a very good job of valuing the basketball and working hard on both ends. So, you know, I. Meet expectations, exceed expectations. Those guys are doing a really good job. What has Bryce done? You think to handle the the expectations, the, you know, the extra expectations uh, of you know coming into a place like this? Well, yeah, and that's not easy. Um, you know, and he saw that on this recent road trip. You know, it's uh, it's not an easy deal. And but he's a tough kid. He's got great. He's got a good moxie to him, and he's tough. He's confident. Uh, his teammates do a really good job of. You know, accepting him and helping him, and I think he's got a chance to be a really good leader uh, as we move forward because guys can trust that, uh, for the most part, he makes good basketball plays. And he's just got to get back here at home, and, and now that we're at home off this road trip, learn from it, move forward, and start. You know, just continue to make those basketball plays that help this team. Being in the unique spot of being, you know, his his coach and his dad. Do you tell him anything in particular after a weekend like this past one? No, just uh, he does a really good job, like a lot of our guys, of watching tape. So I just told him, you know, look at look at your first couple games. Look at Arizona State and U USC and then put in the tape of Utah and, and Colorado and make your own judgment. See, are you moving the same? Are you, is the ball moving the same? Are you running the offense? Are you getting the same kind of shots? You know, he doesn't have to be a, 
a big score for this team in, in this year. You know, I think that'll he'll evolve into that. But this is a team that you know he's just got to run the show and get the ball where it's got to go. And then if all of a sudden you don't pay attention to him, um, he can knock down shots. And I think yesterday's practice he got back to really doing that. And you know, as he told me, Dad's you know it's my first. My first Pac-12 trip, and it's different, uh, and I, I totally understand that. You know, Zach was the same way. It's a, uh, it's that's a whole different, you know, animal. They're two sellouts. They're, you know, it, Colorado hadn't lost. Uh, Utah's only lost once. It's you know, that's a whole different deal for freshmen. And if you look at Zach and Bryce, and that's what we talk about freshmen, both of them played. Bryce played a little bit more, but Zach told me he played like 21, 22 games last year. So his body's telling him it's the end of the year. Uh, and it's, we're not even at the midpoint of the conference season. So that's what freshmen go through. And these are two guys that uh, they're tough minded. They're going to be a big part of what we're doing moving forward. So, um, one, we got to be patient with it. And they're doing a really good job. We, they we, haven't really, one, guys. we haven't really asked you that much about you know, coaching Bryce. Uh, how's that been so far for you? I know you coached Well, Bryce it's been before. great. It, it's been a lot of fun because, you know, Corey's helped with that. You know, coaching Corey the last two years and him being a part of championship programs and now having his younger brother with him, you know, it, Corey's the one that deserves that credit because Corey's done a really good job as we made the move here in the summer and the fall of preparing Bryce for what it's like. And I think anybody deserves that credit of getting uh, Bryce ready for his freshman year. It's Corey. Thanks, guys. Thank you.